Hi, and welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system and are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today in the show, we have Robert Trent. He's a graduate student and he wrote the Kevin MD article, What Role Does the Science of Complexity Play in Medicine? Robert, welcome to the show. Happy to be here. We'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and your journey to where you are today? When I first started out in graduate school, you have this thing called core classes, which is basically like a repeat of everything that you learned in undergrad. And so I was kind of hoping I was done with that uh, at that point, ready to get into the actual research. But I ended up having to kind of basically retake a lot of those biochem and molecular biology and microscopy courses that most of you guys probably take as undergrads. And it was just... I'm not going to lie. I think it did a number on my mental health. Um, I, I think, show me anyone on the top of the street that can recite from memory uh, squalene biosynthesis. And I will probably show you someone who's wasted their life. No one really, I think, has that material well memorized enough to where they're outside of the class, right? They, they know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so for me, like most people like who have to go through that kind of stuff, it, you start asking really weird questions, either out of boredom or, or what, I'm not really sure where it comes from. But I begin to ask myself kind of questions like, what exactly am I learning? If I were to go to another planet and find aliens there who used, you know, similar carbon chain, mm -hmm. you know, oxidation reduction to maintain a steady state, what exactly would I be able to recognize that? What exactly am I learning? And from there, that's kind of what led me into the material for the article, right? I was like, okay, there are universally applicable concepts that you learn in biochemistry that are not just limited to biochemistry. And that is kind of the core foundation of, of complexity science. And I was very lucky to have learned about it from uh, Jeffrey West, who wrote a book, an amazing book called Scale. I really would recommend that um, if anyone finds the article interesting. Um, Jeffrey West works at a place called the Santa Fe Institute out in New Mexico. And they, all they do is just research on complexity science. And it's, it is a, a very, uh, it's emerging field, but it's a very, very uh, significant field. I think for anyone who thinks that uh, biochemistry is, is mindless and anybody who thinks that that stuff is just boring, if, if there's, there is something to be learned there. And so that's kind of what uh, the background was for that article. So let's go straight into it. And it's titled, What Role Does the Science of Complexity Play in Medicine? Now, for those who didn't read it or don't even have a science or biochemical background, can you just summarize mm -hmm. that article from, from the beginning and share the story of why you decided to share it? I guess I'll, I'll preface this because I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm gonna, we're all geeks, right? To some extent, I think we all have things that we geek out about. And one of the things that I've always been big on is understanding the history of science. And there, there's a quote by Steven Weinberg that I think that's really relevant to understanding the article. He says that more often than not, the mistake that we make in science isn't that we take our ideas too far, but that we don't take them far enough. Hmm. And there's kind of some historical evidence to support that. I'm not a physicist, right? But when Einstein came up with general relativity uh, and the mathematics from that made it possible for black holes to exist. And... Um, to my understanding, it was a guy named Carl Schwarzschild who wrote that, you know, first proposition. Einstein said, your mathematics is right, but your physics is wrong. Mm -hmm. He didn't take his own work, his own ideas serious enough. And so basically the, the sum core of the article is, okay, what are the things that we are studying? What are the things that we are learning about and how far can we take those ideas? And what they found is a lot of the concepts for, for biology and for, for ecosystems and things like that are actually applicable to cities they're applicable to companies and i believe that they're applicable to hospitals i believe that they're applicable to healthcare systems and so we have a huge problem with in my opinion medical error um, in this country you can there's a debate about how you assess for and how you you know define medical error but i still think that it's a problem regardless of how significant it may be and so in order to solve those problems with medical error we have to look at the way that the system the healthcare system is connected it's interconnectivity is what really lends itself to its observable macroscopic behavior. Um, and in this case, I'm talking about the phenomenon of medical error. So go into more detail. So tell me about how that interconnectiveness and that complexity that pervades our medical mm -hmm. system, how does that specifically lead to medical error? Oh, okay. So one of the things that you know, your, your body has, my body has, a cell has, um, and even an economy has is a feedback mechanism. Mm -hmm. Right. These feedback mechanisms are 
what we call substrate independent, right? It doesn't matter the form that it takes, right? If I showed you a feedback mechanism, you could identify it, right? Just mm -hmm. because you're a physician and you've been through that process. And so in our healthcare system, there's very little feedback mechanisms in place. There's very little pathways that overlap that ensure processes are being done that need to be done. I think it is amazing to me that physicians who are incredibly intelligent people who spend a very large portion of their life in school have a, a trouble adhering to, you know, the almost 300 year old medical practice of washing their hands. Um, that's just one example that's kind of the most concrete. And so the, the solution to that is, well, we need to have feedback mechanisms in place that enable to make sure that physicians wash their hands. And that's really not present. There are some hospitals out there that are starting to do things like having the patients ask them. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't think that's really the patient's job to ask a physician if they wash their hands, but other things like biovigil and monitoring systems and places like that. And if they do that, right, that creates a feedback mechanism that can help make sure that people and providers are washing their hands. So that would be just one example of it. And there's kind of numerous other ones as well, but also kind of comes into, you know, the structure of the healthcare system as well. Um, we are a very big, top-heavy, hierarchical structure that can't respond to changes fast enough. COVID has been a great example of that, right? I mean, imagine if you, know, you stuck your finger on a stove and it took too long to get that pathway, you know, activated to make you move your finger away, right? There are serious problems associated with that. So all of this stuff, I think, is laid out in the framework of complexity science. And I think that's really going to be the way to go um, as far as the future. You said there are a couple of other examples that you had that really demonstrated that intersection between complexity and medicine. What's another mm -hmm. example that you could name off the top of your head? <laughs> the healthcare structure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really want to get into too much details on that, but I think the problem with the way that our, our healthcare system is structured is that aside from the, to go back to feedback, right? There's not a lot of feedback. Um, if a healthcare, if a hospital is good at its job or if a hospital is bad at its job, there is insatiable need, I think, for healthcare. And so, we can't really rely on free market forces to establish that, right? I mean, that would be one example, but really at the end of the day, if we could have something that is called scale invariant, which means that something to where the size of the system no longer becomes the problem, then you would avoid the problems associated with that top heavy hierarchical structure. To give another example that I think maybe is a bit more concrete and a bit more down to earth, I believe that one of the bigger problems that we have is that providers kind of tend to think in all or nothing, Mm -hmm. um, when they, in terms of, of, of diagnosing patients, in terms of interacting, in terms of doing things. And I get where that comes from. I think that that comes from my assessment, but I'm not a physician, right? <laughs> um, I think that that comes from the fact that you have to learn an astronomical amount of information mm -hmm. your first, you know, one to two years. I mean, you're basically a professional, a graduate level, uh, medical physiology and graduate level physiology courses are basically the same thing as far as I can tell. And, um, I think that causes you guys to, uh, simplify things into all or nothing phenomenon, which is the way that you learn. That's the way our brains work. We simplify things into all or nothing, and then we kind of integrate themselves later. But complexity science can't do that. You can't break down something that's complex, like let's say the brain. You can't break that down into the individual neurons. And just from studying individual neurons, understand thought patterns, understand, you know, emergent phenomenon like that. So I think I think it would fix a lot of the issues as far as feedback mechanisms go. And I think it would fix a lot of issues as far as dealing with people who reduce things to an all or nothing phenomenon, because it can't be reduced to that. We're talking to Robert Trent. He is a graduate student and he wrote the Kevin MD article. What role does the science of complexity play in medicine? Robert, you mentioned feedback mechanisms as one solution to some of the potential problems complexity brings to medicine. What are some other solutions from the science complexity that can be applied to fix some of the problems that you bring up? Biovigil would be one, like having some type of a feedback mechanism that lets people know that they have, you know, did you wash your hands, yes or no, and some type of a monitoring device there. And it's also easier from a social perspective as a physician isn't going to get mad mm -hmm. at a device beeping Right. As opposed to, um, I think a lot of physicians feel like it's not the patient's place to ask them if they wash their hands. So and I think in addition to that, though, second opinions, I think, are, are something else that I kind of I wrote that in another article as well. Just kind of the essentialism of a second opinion. If you are receiving a, you know, let's say that you receive some type of a, a, a diagnosis that's very you know, bleak. I don't know. Myelodysplastic syndrome. Um, there should be some type of a feedback mechanism in place to ensure that that diagnosis was correct. And 
I think one of the things that we could do is, is, is immediately kind of reflexively have second opinion, a second assessment done. And um, I think that would probably reduce it. You know, it, I, things have probably changed since I worked in healthcare, but whenever I did work in healthcare and, you know, LVNs or, or someone like that was to administer insulin, you know, they would withdraw the syringe, they would give the amount, you know, this is how much insulin I'm going to give. And they would show it to a coworker and the coworker could verify, yes, you're giving them however many, you know, MLs of insulin. And uh, they know they know how much insulin is in there, right? There's no, there's nothing really new there. But I'm just saying it, that is an example of a feedback process and a feedback pathway. Um, that's what our natural killer cells use to decide, you know, whether or not they want to kill a cell or not. And it's really just that extra layer of, you know, feedback that allows for the, our system to to be more effective in order to optimize its ability to perform a function. And if one wanted to read more about the science of complexity, what are some resources you could recommend? Uh, Santa Fe Institute does an amazing job. Um, they have whole courses that you can take kind of just at your own leisure, uh, in complexity science. Jeffrey West has written an amazing book out of there. And then also, um, at MIT, there's a guy named Max Tegmark who does a lot of research on artificial intelligence, but because artificial intelligence relies on information, uh, he has done a lot of stuff on complexity science as well. So he's, he's pretty good at that. And my final question, what's your take home message you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? I think most of your audience is, is probably clinicians, right? So mm -hmm. I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for saying this, but Sorry. you know, okay. So let's just excluding theoretical biologists, excluding systems biologists and excluding the ecologists. I think most of the major innovative breakthroughs in molecular biology and in the biomedical sciences have been really just describing things discovering details of, of systems, right? Um, the Human Genome Project was just a set of descriptions. These are the genes of the human genome, right? As we get better and better, and as we develop more and more, and as we keep making progress, you're going to have to start to move into explanations. How do we explain these things that we're studying? And I think the explanation side is really going to come in as complexity science. It's not enough just to know that DNA is the genetic material of the cell. You have to understand how DNA specifically interacts with all the other different types of inputs and outputs that go along in the cell. So I think my words to your audience would be, you know, before they, they make it a big deal with the textbooks and, and ruin the education path process of it, I really would recommend to your audience, take some time, look into uh, complexity science because it will help you so much. It'll make you a better clinician and that will give you, you know, things that you can digest better and it will also help you learn to think not just in terms of individuals, not just in terms of all or nothing, but in terms of whole systems. And that's, that's really, I think where things are moving um, in terms of progress. Robert, thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. Thanks, thanks for having me here.